of time. We reduce the carbon footprint by taking various measures. So it is not only that we are trying to meet certain point-based requirements set out by LEED or any agency. We are looking at it more holistically. And with that, whether it is LEED rating or whether it is other GREHA or other rating systems are there, you automatically qualify to minimum threshold levels of gold. So our buildings are right now gold certified. So sustainability is something which is, and it's because why we have to do it? One is that our internal policy, we have kept it as a part of our policy, as a part of the design brief that this is what is the bare minimum requirement for any of our buildings, whether the client wants it or client does not want it. We did the gold rating in, in 2010 when these concepts was not very well known in the market. And then it is on the transparency of doing the business. It is that today when you talk to the clients about the carpet area versus your leasable area, you have to be very transparent in conveying to them what is that carpet area and what is that leasable area, what is the services you are providing them in terms of whether it is chilled water, temperatures, the cooling load, electrical requirement, the various other aspects, you have to be very transparent. You can't expect that today you give some client one figure and tomorrow those figures are not on ground. And that is something not good for your business in the long run. Maybe you succeed in one or two transactions, but not, it's, it's very unethical and, and we, we don't believe in that. So in the end, and this brings the repeat clients to you. Unless you are transparent, unless you tell them the truth, unless you be ethical in your practices, you can probably get a client once, but not second time, not third time. So these are the things from the client side and that brings the challenges in terms of time, cost, quality. I change the quality to understanding quality because quality is have a different perceptions. And when I say quality have different perceptions for a simple, uh, I would say definition perspective is that compliance is to the, to the standards or the specifications that is quality, but it goes beyond that one. We follow IAS codes and other things in, in buildings and I think all the buildings which are built up, they follow that. But why we say certain buildings are, are of better quality as compared to other. It is eye to detail, it is, it is looking at smaller thing. And then the quality perception is the cost, which is not there. I, I think the, the, these are two things which are probably not that linked because we, we don't have the right perception of the quality. We see the quality as if somebody has put a better quality of the carpet, somebody has put a better woodwork, that, that's not quality. The quality is the, how the work is finished, whether the carpet is laid properly, whether the woodwork is done properly, whether the joints are done properly, whether the concreting is done rightly, that is the quality. So it, it's not additional time, it's not additional cost. And, and I go by the reverse theory in, in telling internal team, in telling our other stakeholders, including the contractors, it is not, the cost is not complying the quality, cost is non-complying the quality. The time is not complying the quality. And we had a real experience in the past where contractor trying to balance the time, cost, quality, the three parameters has moved fast on the time and, and somewhere goofed up on, on the quality front. And rectifying that quality has delayed the whole project and has added a couple of crores to the contractor's cost which cannot be reimbursed by the client. So we have been telling the contractors and trying to educate them that, okay, please ensure that, and when we are trying to achieve this kind of fast track timeline, I have to ensure that on the quality front, how we, we don't mess around with the quality so that overall there is an impact on the quality. So we engage with third party audits in terms of the EHS and quality, which is again something uh, it's inbuilt into our, into our projects. 
Then there is a lack of right skill which is becoming more challenging in, in the construction area. And there are a lot of areas where I would say the opportunities are there. Maybe if somebody is there from any universities or colleges, they, they should look into these areas and talk to the industry professionals. Where are these shortages in the skills? You find civil engineers, but not with a specialization. You find mechanical engineers, but not with the areas of specializations. So how to bridge that gap? How to fill up these gaps? The, in the civil construction, there is a, on the planning side, on the, there is less number of people who are, who are really equipped to handle this fast track kind of a projects. The high quality facade works, the, the curtain walling, the glazing works, less amount of skill set. Some amount of higher finishes, you find less number of skill sets. So how to cover up this one? And when we go back to the planning, means it, it's, when I said 24 months coming to 13 months, how to achieve that one. So you tell somebody to score a 300 or 200 run in, in 50 overs match, initially the reaction, I don't know what, what will be the reaction. Means either he'll be saying, okay, I'll do it or I can't do it, both reactions can be there. And that is not the approach, one should take it. I mean, certain times you need to take a different approach, how to break up that goal into the smaller segments. Just give him every over run rate, this is what is to be achieved, split up into five overs. It has to be again reconciled after every five over. If you have missed that target, how it has to be readjusted in the next five overs. That kind of a meticulous planning exercise has to be done. And then not only going with the softwares of the MSP and Primavera, nothing against that one if somebody is from Microsoft, these are all good software. But the problem is we, we are not using those by putting the right principles into that one. If you don't put the right kind of a resource loading, if you don't do the right kind of a work breakdown structure on that one, you don't link the activities properly, these are not of much use. So it, the output is as good as your input. So you have to look at your inputs, you have to look at, then only you will get a good output on that one. But for a site level monitoring and for the people to understand who are doing the job on the site, how to make this target more relevant? One is to make them quantifiable that, okay, forget about that I have to complete 12, 13 slabs in, in a period of six months. I split it up in terms of the concrete and in terms of steel where I can tell them, okay, you just look at your weekly target or you look at your fortnightly target, which is that weekly target you have to achieve X amount of concrete. And then make, make it relevant for them. It should not be a target which is, which is way off and they can't do it. So when we did that one, we found that the 13 months concept, from 24 to 13 months concept, after two months of sitting with the various vendors, I mean, they initially, which the vendors which were reluctant that, okay, this may not be an achievable target. And when you break it up and you told them, okay, only you do this much in this week. You don't look at what I'm asking to do in six months or eight months. You do mean this much of a quantum of work in, in one week or two weeks time. That's what I am expecting from you. And when we put that things in the bigger perspective, so it is like working from whole to part or from part to whole concept. So we worked the, our schedule, which was from Part to whole, we, we split up the activity into the smaller granular level, we made the whole schedule, we made the critical paths and everything and we understood what are the critical path activity which we need to enforce upon our contractor to make sure that they don't miss out on that one. And then we worked from whole to part again to get into those quantity stuff and make sure it is communicated. Communication is very important in, in any form of project management. I can tell you the communication is the key for success of any project. On a granular level, we made the whole schedule, we made the critical paths and everything and we understood what are the critical path activity which we need to enforce upon our contractor to make sure that they don't miss out on that one. And then we worked from whole to part again to get into those quantity stuff and make sure it is communicated. Communication is very important in, in any form of project management. I can tell you the communication is the key for success of any project. The entire group, the full stakeholders of the team, whether it is your own team, whether it is the external team, whether it is your 
designers, consultant, your, your bosses, unless it is not communicated, I think you, you can't achieve it what you are trying to achieve. And that's why we, we've split up those into run rate monitoring on, on various aspects. So whether it was concrete, steel, number of facade panels, number of MEP activities, all that was split up into that one. We looked at how to crash those activities and we looked at the design aspect of each activity that how we can, simply you telling the contractor you speed up your activities instead of 10 resources who can do it in 20 days, put 20 resources to do it in 10 days, it will not happen. You have to improve your design. You have to see how you can improvise your design to reduce the timeline. You have to see your construction methodology, how it can be different. So it is not only the pushing the contractor, which is generally in any construction project, that is the thing which has happened, that you go to the contractor and push him, okay, no, you do it in 30 days, you do it in 10 days, 60 days activities to be crashed to 30 days, and, and whether that is reasonable or not, you just keep on pushing him. Without guiding him that how he can do it, and a lot of these contractors, they don't have that planning resources at time who can get into those details. So you have to fill up those areas of gap and ask your planning guys that, okay, you guide them how it can be done. Then it comes on the, how it is going to impact your, your cash flow, how it is going to impact your cost of the project. We did that analysis and, and in the overall scheme of bigger things, I think there was no downside of that. Probably there is a upside on that. I do my projects 11 months ahead of schedule. My rent commencement date is moved by 11 months. Straight away, there is a positive side on that one. I'll get 11 months rental. Uh, my IDC instruct, uh, interest during the construction period which will get reduced because I'm, I'm doing it in a lesser period. On the, on the negative side, your acceleration cost towards bringing more equipments will be higher. You have to incentivize your contractors for doing it for a faster speed. You have to pay more for protecting certain activities because you are doing it in a very, very fast speed. So these were the cost, but again, as I mentioned in the very first slide, that there is a relationship of the fixed cost versus the variable cost. So you, there is an advantage on the fixed cost that is getting reduced. So we actually found that the cost arbitrage on the overall thing is, is very, very negligible. When you look at, in fact, it is, it is positive, means your net returns improve once you crash your project by that much of a duration. You have to add up more resources towards the quality control and the EHS on, on such a fast track jobs. As I mentioned on, on the qualities, is understanding of the quality is very important. It's, it's not about the material. The quality is not about the material. So educating your own team, educating the contractor on what is that quality means to you and how that will negatively impact if it is not complied. That is what we need to keep on inculcating to the vendors. And unless they don't understand that one, their focus on the quality is not there. So there is their inherent systems, but those systems are more processes. They are, they are you have to follow step one, step two, step three. But apart from that, there is a lot of other parameters which goes into the quality monitoring. This can be achieved through the various methods. We have, we ask them to provide full method statement, improvise on that method statement, how the quality aspects are looked at, more rigorous inspections, more frequent inspections, uh, audits at, at different levels, checklist sampling, all that is a standard things on that. Manpower constraints are something which is there you have construction is something which is a lot of unskilled labors get into that one. And a lot of these labors are seasonal labors. It, it is that you have a harvesting season, the labor supply will come down. Other areas, the, you have more labor supplies. 
So how to manage that cycles? And that is not a contractor problem, that is your problem. Means for a project, that is an overall project problem. That is why when we talk about the stack stakeholders in a project, we sometimes ignore the vendors which are, which are your partners in the projects. They are not just the vendors in your projects. So we have to look into their problems, what can go wrong or where they are having the challenges to meet up to your expectation, whether it in terms of the resources, whether it in terms of the manpower or the equipment, how you can talk to them, how you can convey them these things much ahead of time. We also get into the logistics plannings of, of the various contractors to ensure that they are, because construction is a very complicated activities. There are a lot of interlinkages of one activities to another. You have to explain it to them, sit with them and, and uh, plan it properly in terms of logistics, how it is going to work around, in terms of method statement, you will find there are four different vendors, A, B, C, D, and, and they are, when you put it on the method statement, you find that it can be a jigsaw puzzle, B, A, C, A, F, D coming back again, and then again B is getting into the same area of work, spoiling previous guy's work. So that has to be worked out properly. Then you have to look into some unconventional way of doing the things to meet up this kind of it, challenges on the timeline. Precast technology, it's available, but it's not used in a large scale. There is, there is a taxation issues, there are cost issues, so, but that is one area which can reduce the time and also provide better quality product because it's done in a controlled atmosphere in terms of factories. You can do a lot of activities off-site rather than doing it on-site because you always have a challenges of the availability of the areas on the site, so which you can do it off-site that always improve the quality and uh, also from a timing point of view. Similarly, on the facades, people are generally the conventional windows or, or stick-on glazings. There is a lot of uh, time which goes into that one quality front, it created more challenges because the number of activities increase, on-site activity got, get much more increase. Applying the sealants, applying, erecting the panels, putting the glasses in place, putting the mullions, transom, everything. There is all that activity when it becomes site-based, there is additional challenges in, in meeting the same quality expectations. You do in a controlled factory atmosphere, unitized panel, just bring it, hang it, panels on the site, that reduces the times, that delivers a better quality. So we have looked into all those areas, how we can improve it. Some things will cost additional, means have additional cost impact, some things may not have additional cost impact. It is only a better planning of that one. It is only a advanced procurement of certain areas. That is how you can improve your timelines. Individually, these things all look good. You have to put everything together. It is like a good recipe where you have to bring everything together in the right proportion. So team building, coordination, coordination or lack of coordination is, is the biggest challenge for any project technically. It is relevant for IT, it is relevant for non-IT pro projects as well. In the non-IT projects, the construction projects, we find that we are having consultants, we are having vendors, we are having in-house team, we are having our clients who come up with new requirements in terms of the space plannings. So all those things, if these are not communicated to everybody in the team, then you will find on the site some work is happening which is either outdated in terms of the drawings or there is a new requirement which has come up 48 hours ago but it has not been communicated to the site level guy or there is a site level thing which has not been communicated to the designer. So designer has not changed his drawings according to that one. So to overcome this kind of issues, I feel that passing on the information is important, relevant and sometimes irrelevant information also. Let it go to all corners in your organization and outside. We created group mail IDs for, for all the people uh, on the project side. 
So any information which comes that goes to that group mail ID does not go to the specific guys. So everybody has that information. Now how much they are reading that information, that is another story. When people see that, okay, no, this is a mechanical drawing, I am the electrical guy, I will not even open that drawing, or the civil guy will not open the plumbing drawing, it does, does not have a meaning to me. But he will find that tomorrow there is a plumbing shaft which has been created and he has to modify his, his slab openings according to the new plumbing drawing. So these are, and, and then we created, with the technology we created the WhatsApp group, which is a real time information can be passed on to a lot of people what is happening on the site. Everybody is up to date what is happening there. Anybody sees any photograph which puts a red flag, which puts an alert to any area of work, any trade, he will immediately send alert. This is what is happening on the site. It is not as per the drawing or our requirement has changed in the last 48 hours. So those things are quite important, passing on the information. What we generally do is we will tell 